Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee. This is going to kind of be a weird video today. Uh, again, fourth week in a row, not going to be able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Got detained again. However, it was not the weather. It's 65 degrees out here right now. Sunshiny, nice light breeze. It's a great day. So I can't blame it on the weather this time, but I can blame it on what the weather did. I'll show you some pics of that here in just a minute. And then the third week, the winds were blowing. And guess what those winds did? There you go. Check that baby out. And um, not only that, I had to go help one of my kids move. Uh, he lives about two hours north of here, so that shot a day. And I had to go to the lake because they've drained the water, about eight feet of the water out of the lake, and the bulkhead's all washed away. So this was my only time. I had to go and I, I poured about 800 pounds of concrete into the bulkhead and I got that all shored up. So hopefully it'll be good for another 10 years and hopefully in 10 years that's somebody else's job, not mine. Anyhow, I just thought I'd kind of give you a little idea, a little history on what's going on on the ranch, what the ranch is all about. This was an old cattle ranch that started back in, in the late 1800s the ranch house, which is now the house where I live, uh, started out as a little 600 square foot ranch headquarters in 1890. They built the house in 1890. I was very fortunate in that an elderly gentleman, when I moved in here about 30 years ago, an elderly gentleman that lived on the ranch next to us, I don't know how old he was, he must have been born around, hey bud, he must have been born around 19, 10 probably. He went to the same university I did and he was there in, in uh, the, I think around 1930. So, uh, but he was a real wonderful gentleman and uh, I got to know him. He died briefly after uh, we moved in here and uh, we really miss him, but he was a great guy. But the interesting thing, the, the priceless thing about him is that he, he knew the entire history of this place because he and his daddy used to ride up and down the creek. There's a big creek that runs through the ranch. It's a, it's a creek that never went dry until the 1990s, the late 90s. And it only did that because they put a golf course in about five miles upstream. And you know what they did with the water. They started sucking it out. But that was the first time the creek had stopped flowing in probably forever. The older gentleman, he knew uh, of at least a hundred years of that creek flowing and he said it had never stopped. The, the old fella told me the history on our house. He said that, you know, he was telling me about how the, the main part of it was built in 1890 and uh, they built another addition onto it at a, at a, a perpendicular level and uh, that was in 1910. And in 1930, they built another section and it was like about every 20 years, I guess when somebody's kid had another kid, they built on another room to the main house. So it, it kind of meanders, and in the, in the 1960s, they built a two-story house back behind this house here, and, and then in the 70s, they hooked the whole mess together. So it's a, a big menagerie of crazy rooms that don't make any sense. The guys that work for the air conditioning company totally hate me. When, when I call them and I say, hey, I've got a problem, they go, oh no, it's you again. Uh, because the attic is a total disaster. There's three separate units and, and, and the house just meanders all over the place. But so, so much for that. But um, going through a lot of the history of the house, the, the old man told me, he said, well, you know, there's a girl, there's a girl buried in your yard. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, there's a four year old girl buried out there in your yard and and you know out here we find things all the time here you know uh, like a, a a cedar post that's grown inside of another tree chains hanging from trees that you don't you can only see part of the chain because the trees grown around it over all these years but i never even thought about there being a grave and honestly i'm i'm probably sitting over it right now the the old gentleman told me he said way back in the 30s he said there was a, a little daughter of the people who lived here and who passed away and they buried her and he said i'm not sure where the grave is he said somewhere within your yard there and he said they said they put it by the the biggest oak tree that was there 
So uh, I'll show you the tree in just a minute. It's it's about six feet right there, and uh, this was all when we moved in this area right here. There's a bunch of rock below me now. I'll show it to you in just a second. And uh, it was all covered up with dirt and weeds and grass. Nobody had lived here for years and years and years, except skunks and and rodents and all. And and uh, hey, bud. But anyway, we found something that I guess if if you really had to put your finger on any one area, I, I would bet on this spot right here. Let me get that camera down off the tripod. And uh, bud, you want to say hi to everybody? I guess y'all can't see him. Bud. Oh, Bud's deaf. Hey, buddy. Good boy. But anyway, when we got to when we got to, got this area out here uncovered, we found this little marker right here, and you can see two tiny handprints in it. And there's an S right here, and a T right there. And we did some research, and some people that lived here a long time ago, their last name did start with T. And then if you look right. It's always hard for me to look at this camera and, and figure out what I'm looking at. But if you look right here, 6, 26, 33. So that kind of fits in with what the with what the old gentleman was telling me. I don't know if this is a grave or not, but there's no other areas on the whole ranch, especially here up close to the house, that closely resemble anything that you would do to honor uh, a, a little person like that and and a lot of people say well gosh you got a, a dead girl buried in your front yard does that creep you out and and you know I just tell them no no that if you have to think about it and put it in perspective despite the fact that that was you know all those years ago almost a hundred years ago you still have to realize that was someone's child that, that was someone's precious little four-year-old daughter and so so I'm honored to to be here to you know, pay tribute to her, whoever the little blessed angel was. And, and it's my job, as long as I'm here, to, to take care of this little site, just to, just to honor her. But anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy that. We find stuff like this all the time. There is no telling how long this chain and for that matter, that hunk of baling wire on the bottom of it, there's no telling how long this has been here. That, that limb's, oh gosh, it's, uh, it's two feet thick right there. And that's not going into the center of it, but I would, I would bet you that, that that limb was maybe eight, 10 inches around when that chain was put on there. And there's just odds and ends like this old trace chain right here. No telling how long that baby's been there. The barn was built in 1910. Who knows when this fence was put here. All kinds of weird stuff. It looks like Matt and Mark built them a toilet back in 1992. But that was actually a little waterer that they wanted to build for their kitty cats. And um, I don't know why it got dug up. So, something went in, I guess. Something went in, something came out. And this little dude right here really got my attention too. When I initially dug it up, it was in the yard. All I could see was this piece of conduit coming up out of the ground and the words, danger 220 volts and kind of interesting over here on this side it's dated looks like it says August 30th of 1942 so that one's been here a while too all right and I'll show you something pretty cool here too this this area that we're in right now used to be a stock tank or a pond for those of you who think that the word tank can only be used for a vehicle with treads and a cannon on it. But this uh, this dam for this little tank was put here back in the 40s. Okay, let me see. Let me see where it is. Yeah, it's right here by that big limb. Let me put my shadow over. It'll be easier to see, I think. There it 
There you go. Unfortunately, it's broken, but you, you get the idea. That's a little porcelain doll face that they put in the mortar when they were making this dam. And from what I understand, it's an old German thing. And uh, this part of Texas is just full of German people, especially back then in the 40s. And um, that, that little doll face, she's there to protect the dam. She is for good luck. And obviously she's done a good job because it's stood the test of time for sure. You know, it doesn't matter how old you get or how lame you are. There's nothing better than a good roll in the grass. Right, bud? Well, bud, you're having a hard time. If, if you saw his video, he turned 14 in November. And uh, arthritis and some other problems are really giving him some fits. He's really having a hard time getting around. But he's still a sweet old puppy. Good boy, bud. So thanks a lot for stopping in on Out on the Ranch today. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate all your kind comments that you guys leave. I know this was kind of a weird uh, video today, but people ask me about the ranch all the time. And I thought, well, I'll just show you some of the idiosyncrasies of it. So anyway, thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you next time on Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee. An old bud <laughs> fell down. Hey, Marty. <laughs>